This podcast is brought to you by Primary Intelligence, the leader in win-loss analysis, focused on helping businesses uncover the unique story on how each sales rep can win more deals. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me on another rousing edition of Sales Intelligence Weekly, brought to you by Primary Intelligence. I'm Ryan Queller. Competitive intelligence. Just let that sink in for a second. CI, the old CI. One of the most common questions B2B businesses have when it comes to increasing win rates is, you know, what are my competitors doing to adapt in today's economic environment? How do I stay ahead? If you're a B2B business, chances are there's an increasing number of competitors playing in your market. Those that you know, and also those that you are totally unaware of that might be out there lurking like the alligator with his eyes just above the, above the water. We see it in pretty much every industry that we work with. And when your buyers have more options, it becomes increasingly more important for your sales reps to have the skills, knowledge, and tools to better differentiate against your competitors. And that's the word here, differentiate. So how do you go about collecting competitive intelligence from the right sources and empower your reps with competitive data? That matters. And that's the other key word that matters, competitive intelligence that matters. Chewing on this topic with me today is my good friend, Mr. Rob Fandridge, Senior Manager and Sales Engineer at, at SPS Commerce. Rob, welcome. Hi, Ryan, thanks for having me. Okay, before we you know, launch into this, I need everybody to understand who we're actually talking with here. Um, Rob is a you know, world-class curler, uh, been paid, uh, I just found out that he's been paid to curl. Uh, you know, he, I think that, you know, the best curler of all times might be Kevin Martin, uh, nicknamed the old bear or Kmart. I think if, if, if there was a number one, you know, Kmart number two, Rob Fandrich, I mean, just right. Am I, am I about, am I close or am I way off? There's a couple zeros after the two, but yes, I, <laughs> I'd be up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, welcome. Welcome, man. I'm, I'm excited to spend some time with you. Uh, before we get into the conversation, tell us about you. Tell us about SPS Commerce. Uh, before we hop into the combo. Sure. Yeah. Um, so like uh, you mentioned, I'm a senior manager on our sales engineering team. Uh, I've been with SPS Commerce now for almost 14 years, and I've been privileged enough to work in all the different departments from implementation to support. Um, and then for the last nine years now have been in the, the sales engineering world. And so this is really where I, I thrive in, in terms of talking with customers, talking with prospects, about what their needs are, uh, what solutions we have to offer them. And so um, that's really kind of the, the history of it uh, in terms of my career. But with SPS Commerce, we are the, the retail's largest network. Um, so think of uh, LinkedIn or Facebook, um, connecting different people together. Um, SPS does that in the supply chain world. So any retailer to supplier, to third-party warehouse, to broker, to any anyone that needs to communicate in getting you your shipment in two days, that's where SPS Commerce will live. So we help automate those um, transactions. We make sure that um, compliance is, is happening, but we're also able to automate a lot of those process, processes for our customers. Boy, uh, supply chain is not something that many people used to talk about until about a year and a half, two years ago, when all of a sudden supply chain was the first thing on everybody's mouth. When you go to a coffee shop, yep. people are talking about the supply chain, you know I mean? <laughs> what, I mean, so, so it's a, it's a, dynamic pressurized uh, place uh, right now with the supply chain. Okay. But you said something I want to unpack a little bit. Um, you know, why, why do you get, where do you, why uh, you said that this is the place where you love to be talking with your customers. You know, why, why do you get energy from that? It's just fascinating. Um, every single customer, while they all roughly need the same thing in terms of they need to connect with a different organization how they actually do that and the way that they think about that can be very, very different. Whether it's different systems, whether it's different processes, there's no, there's no cookie cutter vanilla answer for any solution um, and how we actually propose that. So the biggest thing for me is just being able to talk and understand how these organizations are running and what they care about and, and making sure that we actually do have you know, a solution that can offer them some value. Uh, boy, you just mentioned the, like maybe one of the words that you and I have talked about through the years. I mean, to being totally transparent here, um, 
SPS is a, cu a customer of primary intelligence, right? And we've been working together for, for some time. Mm -hmm. um, and the word understanding yep. is a word that you and I have talked about through the years. Um, demonstrating that we understand, you know, we get you, right? That is, that is a key, not only in your industry, but almost in every industry. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get into that a little bit further and specifically around competitive intelligence. Um, but there was one deal um, that I want to, to unpack a little bit and share with our, uh, you know, share with, uh, with everyone. I know you recently were, were able to leverage this comp some competitive intelligence to turn a lost deal into a win, right? It was a lost deal. They had gone another direction, but you converted it using some of the competitive intelligence into a win. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Yep. So we did have a, a very turbulent sales cycle, a um, lot of ups and downs, and we'd been targeting this customer for probably a little over a year. And we were in then, uh, we were notified that they were having a system change, which kind of prompted a more active sales cycle. And we knew that it was going to be competitive, right? This is, you know, anytime there's a system change or anytime there's a major um, adjustment to someone's supply chain or their business, that's really when we know that it's going to be very competitive because they're likely not only looking at different systems, but they need to make sure that they're getting, you know, numerous quotes on their, you know, ISV type providers, right? So anyone that's providing them a service, they need to make sure that they have a couple different options. So we knew it was competitive after about three months of an active sales cycle with them. We were notified that uh, they were going with a competitor. And so that really prompted our, our voice of the buyer conversation or our processes to launch. So our sales rep marked that opportunity close lost. Two days later, um, the uh, main point of contact filled out the, the survey for you know, why they chose the competitor versus SPS. And they also opted in for the interview process. And so we actually conducted a formal interview uh, through primary intelligence. And as a result of that, we got some nuggets back on you know, strengths, weaknesses of both solutions. And when our sales rep got to you know, see the transcript and hear the voice recording of that interview, she went back into the battle cards uh, for that competitor and, and took a screenshot that basically outlined all of the things that they were worried about going with that competitor, you know, blurred out the names and, and what companies they were, but they, she took that screenshot and she sent it over to that um, point of contact and, and basically just said, you're probably sick of hearing this from me, but this is what other buyers exactly like you who went to this competitor said about their implementation and why they ultimately decided to go now with SPS Commerce. So she sent that over um, and I would say within two days, they came back to us. We started doing some more uh, aggressive pricing strategy, but within a week after that email went out, they had formally then signed with SPS Commerce. So from a deal closing lost to a deal won, 32 days transpired between that. Um, and so that's really... I've never heard of something like this happening, but that was really how powerful that, that context was from what other buyers had said um, that really got them thinking. And I think they had started to feel some of that as they started their implementation. And so um, that's really what, what caused them to move over to SPS. Okay. So um, I, I didn't know a lot of the details around this. You know, I, I've heard it secondhand from other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know there was a 32 day gap. I didn't know that the the survey basically in an in interview happened within a couple of days. I want. Uh, okay, I'm a little bit gobsmacked by this. I mean, this, it's kind of it's kind of rad. Uh, I also haven't Amazing. heard a lot of this before, yeah. either. I've I've heard of deals that were maybe uh, kind of on the fence and they they've used battle cards, but I've never seen a lost convert yep. to a win. Uh, in this circumstance, I want to unpack a couple of things. You said that um, the salesperson, when he found out that he lost the deal, he closed it out, lost, closed, lost in Salesforce. Now you all are set up on our automation inside right. of, okay. So when that happened, did that trigger a, a survey to go out to this, this person immediately? Yep. So the next day the survey went out and then a day after the survey went out, the respondent filled out the survey. Yep. And in that survey, did they opt in to, to being willing to being open to an interview? Correct. They did. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know we, any of that. All right. We so, completed the interview. 
Okay. And then they completed the interview. Okay. So um, that, that's what happened on the front end. Uh, in the, in the, in the interview, something triggered the sales rep. How did the sales rep, you know, know, you know, why, why did the sales rep do this? I mean, tell me, tell me a little bit about their thinking. What triggered them to say, Hey, I'm going to send this out to the, this buyer. Yeah. So, you know, she was one of the most bought in people to the, the win loss program. I, I have to say like, but it's been a journey at SPS getting people aware of what we've built here. Um, this start, like my win loss journey started back in 2017. Um, we didn't, you know, we've been working with primary intelligence then since 2018, we rolled out full automation back in, uh, April of 2020. And so once, once these, you know, account executives started getting these survey responses back or the interview responses back, it's slowly started to build a more normalization for win loss data. And so I think it's, you know, when we get in these competitive situations or when we get, you know, good feedback like this, it's really prompted people to start using it on the offense. And in this scenario, obviously it was a closed loss deal, but she was, she had been chasing this for so long. It was important to her. Uh, she, she didn't want to take no as a, as a final answer here. So she, yeah, took that data, went on the offense one last time and said, Hey, this is, you know, this is it. This is what I can do. Here's what other customers are saying. And, and it worked. I mean, it, it was a hail Mary, but it worked. What do you got to lose anyway, right? The deal's already lost. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and she took a screenshot of competitive intelligence that had been accumulated from the other surveys other and interviews surveys. that we've done over time. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. okay. So, and, and I think what I heard you say is this is what other people just like you have been saying about the implement. They, she targeted a very specific thing yep. and this is the reason why they come with SPS yep. and that offensive well, I love that, by the way. They're not just using this as defensive play This is or corrective. This is also an offensive. I mean, they're, 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 it's a play to attack, to go to make a deal go. That's, yep. that's fascinating. Have you seen any, just out of curiosity, have you seen any other offensive plays that, that anybody at SPS has, has run with? I mean, it's been, a, it's been used more so for, for that purpose. You know, once we... Once we know that there's a competitor in there, we'll look through the battle cards. And what I've, you know, tried to instill in these reps, whether they're new or tenured, is that, you know, this is really factual data because it's coming directly from how our buyers are perceiving SPS and our competitors. Um, let's start using that earlier on in the sales cycle. You know, a lot of times in our industry, it's very much like, oh, we do that too. Oh, we have that te technology too. And it's how do you differentiate that by being very specific on those, you know, what, what is our secret sauce and how can we, you know, defend that? That's how we have to start going on the offense earlier on in the sales cycle by using these competitive nuggets that, that we're getting. There's that word again, differentiate, because I mean, at the end of the day, buyers will look at products and oftentimes their eyes will gloss over. There's so much data out there. They're like, okay, everything looks the same. This product will do the same thing as that product. And, uh, you know, where we differentiate ourselves can be in, in these smaller areas to help us demonstrate that we understand their, their, their needs. Okay. So I want to unpack something here. You mentioned that it took a little bit to normalize. Why do you think sales reps often struggle when it comes to competitive deals? Specifically with competitive deals, I feel that they, they get nervous or they're, they're almost afraid to, to go on the full offense. Um, they might not know all the specifics around what a competitor has. And so a lot of times they just rely on the sales engineers to differentiate. Um, but a lot of the, the minutia there is really more front end value to them. It's not just technical details of the solution. There's a lot of things that we do ongoing for our customers that aren't even technical um, that, that they need to you know, understand and own. So I, I, I think that they struggle with it because it's something that's not in their day-to-day -day world, right? They're so focused on what SPS Commerce does. They don't always understand what our competitors are doing or how they're talking about it. And so that's really where the battle cards come in perfectly because we're tracking all that. We're, we're documenting it. We're getting proof points all the time on our competitors and what they offer and how our customers talk about those solutions. So um, 
yeah, I think they, they just struggle with it because they, they aren't in it all the time and they don't always understand even if it's a competitive situation. Okay. Source matters. Let's, let's, let's go here. So when, when you're talking about gathering competitive intelligence, I mean, there's probably a million different places you can go to, to, to get data about a particular customer or competitor or whatever. Um, what do you need to consider? What, what are some important things to consider when, when looking at the resources, the, the sources, not the resource, but the sources of the competitive intelligence? Yeah, I mean, obviously you can go online, you can Google search, you can go to different, you know, crowdsourcing type websites and figure out kind of what the reviews are there. Um, a lot of those tend to be when you have had, when you have had a negative experience, right? You want to be more vocal about that. Um, but you also need to factor in some of the good stuff too, which is where um, having the win loss piece, like we have automation for both wins and losses and uh, we're getting the good of, of what we're doing. We're also getting maybe some of the negative that we're doing. Um, and so, you know, hearing it directly from a buyer that just went through an experience with maybe SPS and a competitor, we can really get, you know, actual factual details on that. And, you know, you can always have different perspectives, right? So it's not always like a, a guarantee that what they said is hundred percent factual. There could be some perception there. Um, but over time now, we've been at this for, like you said, a couple of years, we're starting to see more than just, you know, nuances here and there. It's, it's very much a trend that we're seeing. And we now have a very good baseline for where we're going and what our competitors are doing. So we, we know um, kind of where we're at after getting thousands of these interviews and surveys completed. Um, it's no longer just a, a whim, you know, that we're going on. And it's not, you know, as the sales engineering team, we have, you know, thousands of opportunities under our belt too. So when we hear stuff, we can also document things like that and we can help spread the, the word on that. But for us, hearing it directly from the buyer is, is incredibly impactful. So, you know, I think, gosh, Rob, looking back, thinking back, it's hard for me, you know, the older I get, the, the further back I go in my memory, the, the less accurate it is. But if, if memory serves, man, I remember when we first started before we had automation turned on, I mean, weren't we doing something like 20 interviews a year or like 30 interviews a year or something like that for you? It was like 20. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So, you know, in, since we turned on automation, you mentioned thousands uh, of data points that's between, you know, the, the online interviews, the surveys, and also the, the live in-depth interviews. Um, why is that important? Why is that date, like the volume of data points? Why is that even important to, to you as a sales yep. engineer? Well, well, there's a couple things there. Um, the first thing for me, because I, I am the leader of the win-loss program at SPS, um, back in those days when we were doing 20 interviews, 20 surveys a year, it was very, very manual on my side. I was overseeing a lot and we have hundreds of sales reps. So I was trying to target different opportunities, make sure the right opportunities were going. Um, it was just not you know manageable for me and, anymore. And so with that automation, that takes me out of the equation. It takes our sales reps out of the equation when they, you know, the win loss just becomes a byproduct of their normal sales force, you know, reporting that they have to do. And so, you know, the number of data points there, wow, it's just, I mean, it's incredible. Like there, we've never had this much data about ourselves and our competitors and sales reps don't even have to, you know, click a button to make that those data points appear. Um, it's happening in the background as they're doing their normal sales force, close one, close loss, that's when, he, you know, when loss takes over. And so, you know, not only can, can they access it, we have, you know, sales engineers that are in there all the time. So even if we have new hires that are, are not as familiar with our, our competitive landscape, they can go through those battle cards and start getting up to speed on things that they can bring out um, specifically in their opportunities that they're assigned. Yeah. So we've heard this from so many of our customers that, um, in fact, I mean, saying this out loud is, is kind of painful because we're, we're kind of the, the, the pioneers of the win-loss industry, but traditional win-loss is dead, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really dead. Traditional meaning uh, you, you send over a list of opportunities. We go do the outreach. We get uh, you know, a handful of interviews for you over a year. Yep. You know, the data comes late. Uh, the data, I mean, think about in the traditional setting, there's no way that we would have had the same kind of data or speed to acquire something, to flip something from a loss to a win in a traditional setting, right? I mean, totally. It just, yeah, just that, I mean, that it, it would have taken 30 some days to 
figure out which opportunity to actually reach out to. And then by the time you schedule something for the interview, I mean, it would have been months. Um, whereas now we're seeing it in days. Yeah. And so gives you real time, uh, information and data that empower you to make decisions. Okay. So let's, let's, let's go further down this path about empowerment. Um, we've talked about, um, individual reps, one rep in particular that flips something. I, I, whoever that person is, I want to high five them. That is, that's amazing. Um, how can, let's talk about sales leaders. How can sales leaders empower their reps and build sales confidence for these competitive deals, right? If, if we've talked about, you know, they, they sometimes struggle with, you know, competitive deals, what can sales leaders do to empower their reps? Yeah. Um, how I have empowered sales reps is I, I, I want to convey to them that they should think about coaching their sales reps, that every opportunity is a competitive opportunity, whether they're a current customer, whether they're net new, whether they're, you know, evaluating numerous competitors, we still need to follow some very, you know, systematic steps in our discovery and our, you know, prescription of what we're actually going to sell. And so what I, what I try to empower them with is make sure that we're doing our discoveries to make sure that we understand all of the needs that our customers have and make sure that we actually have a solution. So that's kind of the first piece of it, but there's also a component there for um, the competitive Intel. So if we know that we're going to be up against competitor X, Y, Z, we know that we're going to be higher priced than them and our technology may or may not in the eyes of our customer be equal. So we better have a, a good pricing, you know, discounting strategy, or we better come with something that truly differentiates, uh, differentiates us from that competitor. And so I think we, we we're thinking about it as let's treat every cycle as competitive, no matter what, even if they have been a long time customer of ours, there's a chance that they could be evaluating others and our value prop still needs to remain, but we can also do our best on a, on a pricing discounting strategy because, you know, in our surveys and interviews, we also hear that, you know, we're not the cheapest option out there. We are a higher priced vendor. And um, our value though, is that we handle a lot of these other things for our customers that they don't necessarily see on paper when it comes to comparing quote to quote. And so it, it comes with a differentiation plus, uh, you know, a discounting pricing strategy or something there to help align, you know, what their needs are to the value that we're providing and why that value, then we can charge what we charge. So I love that. Um, just as an FYI, um, we are mining our own data and we're doing some, some additional research to unpack what actually understanding business needs really means. Um, across yeah. all industries, 20 years worth of our own data. And we're, we're finding some very interesting things. And I'll have this to you as soon as we have it. Well, I'll let you know and I'll share it with you. I was going to say, please later. put me number one on the list for <laughs> that export. You, you got it, man. No, no, it's, it's really interesting. So we call it on spreadsheet and off spreadsheet. So it's on sheet, off sheet stuff. When good, the best sales reps are the ones that look, it's table stakes to check the box down the product functionality feature, right? Does this product do this? Does this product do that? They compare, they go check, 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 check. Okay, that's the on-sheet stuff. And let's say that they're doing a full evaluation and they're evaluating four or five or six or seven different, different organizations, different products and vendors. They down select down to, okay, these are the ones that check the box. The di that's not the thing that drives the decision. The thing that actually drives the decision are the off sheet attributes. And those are super, super customized to the individual deal. And you had alluded to that earlier in our conversation. And so that, that depth of understanding or demonstrating that we totally understand, we get them, we understand their needs, not from a product feature functionality, but from a workflow, a cultural um, um, obst obstacles, you know, all of these other off sheet issues that say, ah, they just felt like a better quote unquote fit for us. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are actually driving the decisions and, and we'll have that to you uh, soon. It's really cool. It's very interesting yeah. to see. Um, but anyway, but I digress. Let's come back. I want to, I want to talk more about battle cards. We talk a lot of, uh, we, you and I have talked a lot about how the voice of your customer can help create alignment between sales, marketing, CX product, right? How can other customer centric teams use battle cards and competitive intelligence. 
Totally. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the biggest initiatives for uh, 2021, 2022 at SPS was, okay, we got this full automation. Now our surveys are going through the roof. Our interviews are coming back. Like we have a machine now. It's no longer just a, a small subset of deals that have feedback. Now we're at a point where we have a lot of feedback. So my goal was to get, you know, demand gen and product marketing and product management fully cooked into this, this true voice platform so that it's not just, you know, sales operations, you know, trying to run this win loss thing. There's other players out there, like you alluded to that, that really should have a pulse on, on voice of the buyer. So the first team that I got up and running on it was our marketing um, demand generation team. So what they're able to do then is run very targeted marketing campaigns based upon how our prospects or customers are talking about our solution. Um, maybe it's a specific competitor that we drill into that says, you know, this is what we're hearing on win loss. How can we target those, you know, out here to get more demand generation into our, our pipeline? Um, so they've, they've been able to do that. Uh, we've run very targeted campaigns and we've had some, some good success there. Uh, we've also now gotten product management, product marketing bought into it a little bit more. Um, not to say that voice of the buyer is, um, you know, it's one lever in their, in their roadmap, right? They're, they're talking to actual customers that have used the product for many years. Um, they've talked to, you know, they, 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 it's super helpful for them though, to have that pre-sale um, indication of how our buyers are perceiving the solution, um, what they're thinking is missing, or maybe is, is something that could be improved upon. So they're really tied into that from just a roadmap perspective. It's one more lever in their arsenal for, for ways that they can track voice of customer, voice of buyer, um, just where their product lives. So those are the three main teams that have been very actively engaged here at SBS. I think it's actually, thank you for that. I think it's actually super fair and important to point that out. Win loss is not the only thing. If, if, you, if, if you're listening to this and you think, Ah, you know what? Win loss is going to solve all my problems. No, that's not, that is not the case. This is one very important, but yep. just one lever that you need to be pulling in your, in your broader strategy for marketing or CX or product or, you know, whatever. Um, so no, I, I, I appreciate that statement. Absolutely. Um, okay, Rob. So, you know, parting wisdom here, let's, you've been running the show for a little bit, you know, you've been, you're a, a wily veteran in the win loss space at this point. You pioneered, you were one of the first. In fact, you were our first customer to, to, um, to cross the 1000 survey data point. And I think you were the fastest to get there. I, it was really quick. It went whoop, really, yeah, really quickly. It took off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the one piece of advice you would give to um, anybody that's new, maybe to the win loss space? Um, you know, that that's looking at automation, what, what kind of advice would you give to them? I would, um, crawl, walk, run is, is really how, how we started and, and it worked for us. Um, you mentioned the days of, of doing the spreadsheets back and forth and, and we're probably past that point since that, you know, is really inefficient, but, um, I think you have to really look at your organization and you really have to understand the perceptions of win loss data. Um, it took me a while to get sales reps comfortable with the fact that this is not, uh, you didn't do your job or this is not a, I mean, it, it could be a coaching moment, but it's not necessarily like, uh, this is the de facto way that we're going to, you know, grade you as a sales rep. It's bigger than individual deals. It's all this competitive Intel that we're getting. It's all this data that we're able to get. So that was one obstacle is just understanding the implications of, of, rolling out a program like this. Um, so that was one piece of it. And then the second piece I think is, is um, evangelize the data as quick and as fast as possible. I'm still uh, working on this because I hear these nuggets and I, I need to get this out to my team ASAP. And, and that's the piece that I'm working on, you know, with my, with my CSM at, at, at primary intelligence is how can we get these nuggets quicker and faster to our sales reps and get that into their hands so that they view win loss as a really powerful tool for them so that they can get these nuggets and process it and quickly action on it. It's not something that just lives over in the side and it's always there. It's, it's how do we get those nuggets back into the hands of our people that need it the most? And so um, 
yeah, I, I think that's my, my, um, two cents on the, on the topic of <laughs> when loss, but I'm sure I could talk for hours on, on when loss. Yeah. Well, Rob, man, thank you so much for the time. Uh, as always, my friend, it's good to be with you. Uh, Likewise. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. And listeners, for more from SPS Commerce and Primary Intelligence, visit www.primaryintel.com forward slash podcast. And make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time.